Hey, welcome back. So this is part two of Derby Rebuild. Uh, where we left off last time was we had just finished assembling the bottom short block, I guess you'd call it, with a new barricade crank, uh, reusing all the seals, or reusing old seals because I didn't have any new ones. Um, and uh, yeah, pushing it back together. So... We trailed off on the last one, kind of showing uh, how I was going to modify an MVT to get onto there. So like I said, this is a base plate that I bought when I bought two Start 5 motors off a guy, Tyler, on uh, Moped Army. Um, he had these already made up, so I bought one or two of them. and. Uh, they are not for a MVT, but with the modification of putting this groove in so that it locates the outer edge of the stator. And then um, also had to modify some uh, M6 screws so that they had a much shorter uh, countersink so that they would sit flush. And I'll have to also go and drill some holes for the this one uses a slightly different pattern, but uh, drill and tap a couple threaded holes in there. But you can see for test fitting, for this part anyway, that this definitely goes on. So we'll just So as you can see, that uh, fits on there pretty good. And then the next uh, hurdle to clear is uh, the rotor. So as I mentioned before, this is the base plate off of a Minarelli. And as you can see, it's been pretty heavily modified. You could leave this flange on. Uh, I took it off just because I uh, thought I would have to remove it, but didn't have to in the end. So takeaways here are this needed to be moved up this shoulder and this recess that all these go into by about a hundred thou. And then that actually clears the bottom of the base plate. Minarelli taper is surprisingly very close to being correct. Um, could also just make a thicker base plate as long as this doesn't interfere with the oil pump drive, which I'm a little concerned about, but I'll use this for testing and then I might just make a custom stator and after the fact. And one other thing I might need to do here is open up this hole a little bit just because you need the adjustment room for the cable. So it's not ideal right now, but it will work. With that done, one other thing I did was modify this uh, Dio pulley to have a 2018 RS seal in the back so it'll fit on the shaft here just to get rid of the stock pulley. Now I also trimmed down the OD of the pulley halves a little bit because the belt width on the Dio is quite a, on the ZX is quite a bit wider so this will still give more travel it just fits in the case nicer. Eventually, I'll probably try shoving something like this in there, or maybe making new sheaths, because again, the, the ramp angle is a little off, so the belt could be narrower. Um, but for now, this will work. So I think next up is going to be pulling the old motor out of the other bike, and uh, Pulling all the parts off of it that I need to put onto here, which is going to be like the variator and the cylinder and the carbon intake and uh, throwing all that together on the bench. So let's get into that.
Okay, so that's out on the bench. Uh, you can see I got a BRK70 kit on here. Um, and I can't remember. Kit this Ital kit intake and a Melosi reed block. Uh, other than that, it was stock. You can see the damage there to the end of the shaft. So let's uh, pull this off, pull this off. Those are the only two things I really need off of this. For time's sake, because this is not quite ready yet, I will probably do a follow up video on getting this working on here. Um, but for now, because I do need to modify the drive spigot and a bunch of other things and uh, this is my daily so unfortunately i thought i might be able to get away with that but i'm gonna have to bore this out i think or make a custom nut that fits in there just to get that correct but either way we'll get this together put back on the bike and get it running Just pre-lubing the bearing with a little bit of two-stroke oil before I put the piston on. I'm really regretting not uh, taking the old oil out of the oil tank. There's so much carbon spots on this. I run synthetic and I don't normally see nearly as much carbon especially for like I put maybe there's like a thousand kilometers on that motor so and there's only 800 on this cylinder no 600 on this cylinder I'm just compressing the piston ring, making sure it's in the right groove, and then sliding the piston into the bore. I'm gonna put another little splash of oil in the bore before I seal it up. I did put some on the outside of the piston, but it's pretty dry in there, so. Head gasket looks just fine. Just gonna put a light coat of this on it just to fill in any imperfections and then clamp that on there too. All right, and the last thing to switch over from this is my intake.
So yeah, I decided I'm going to torque these down just because uh, I've had these come loose before. So I'm torquing them to 10 foot pounds. It is a very large pain to get in there and deal with them after. Here's something I never understood why Melosi does this. They put words on the ceiling face. It's like, why? I mean, you can go in with a knife and just trim them off, but it's still should be flat. It's a friggin' ceiling face. It shouldn't have writing on it. Slam this thing in there. One of those bolts was missing before because it has the ground wire on it for the motor. So it's still attached to the bike. All right, so um, going back together, uh, I had to recharge the camera battery. So it didn't miss much though. I installed the stock ignition for now. Like I said, I have to do some extra machining on there and I need this thing together today to drive. So I'm going to just put the stock ignition on. I'll do another video when I do finalize that and uh, get all the specs on how to mount it. Um, I did upgrade the clutch to a stage six Minarelli clutch um, and a Minarelli bell. They actually fit onto the shaft here. So I also have a Polini variator on here. Um, it's uh, off a of Derby Hunter. Um, they will fit onto these and stock outer pulley, um, stock pulley here, although I did remove the starter clutch section off the back to lighten it and stock spring at the moment. Um, it looks like I could actually use a slightly bigger pulley or get the pulley halves to go together a bit more. There's a little bit of slack there for like the low, low end, which hopefully that derby or the uh, DO pulley will help with a little bit. Um, so I did have on the bell, I had to remove a couple millimeters, three millimeters off of this spigot to get it in far enough so that the clutch shoes were actually inside the bell. Even stock, you'll find, uh, this is a stock one that I machined this nub down on. Uh, even stock, the shoes basically stick just a little bit outside of the bell. So you can actually get a bit more engagement with the bell if you machine this down a little bit. You have to be careful. You need to also move the splines in like a millimeter or two as well, if, depending on how far you go. I think this one I only took like maybe 50 thou off of there, but um, it, I mean, you can look at it and measure and see how far the pads are sticking out and then just take a little skim off of there. Um, so, I'm just going to keep going, uh, get this together so I can ride it today, and then yeah, I'll do another video when I get some more of that other stuff that I've been kind of modifying for this, because um, these are pretty neat bikes, they do use a lot of Minarelli and Piaggio stuff can kind of bolt onto them, um, so we'll show that uh, in another video.
that's pretty much that. It's back together. Uh, I got to do a shakedown run on it, but uh, I think that's it for this time. Like I said, I will cover some of the other cool stuff that I do, I'm trying to do there with the MVT ignition and a little bit more in depth on the clutch and the uh, pulleys on another episode. But until then, take care.